Hi everyone, it's Connor here from Durham Hearing Specialists. I hope you're doing well and welcome to a very interesting video today. We've got some unusual debris growing in this ear canal. Now I'm willing to bet that you will have touched this today. You may have rolled around in it, you may have breathed it in. This is a fungal ear infection, what we call otomycosis. Oto meaning ear, myco, anything with myco in the name usually refers to fungus. So this is otomycosis and the type of fungus that's growing in this ear I believe is aspergillus specifically Aspergillus niger. And we can deduce that because there, there, there's lots of black bits in the ear canal. So uh, for example, on the left-hand side, as we creep into the ear canal, we can see this sort of black charcoal smearing on the left. And then further down, you see all these little threads, these little fine filaments. Um, there, and there are black dots on the end of those filaments, which is characteristic of Aspergillus niger. Um, if it was another strain like Aspergillus fumigatus or Flavus, it would look different. So um, with Aspergillus fumigatus, you tend to find a colony more sort of uh, turquoise, sort of blue-tinged colony. And with Aspergillus Flavus, you tend to find this sort of uh, dusty army green, moss green colony. So I'm fairly sure that this is predominantly Aspergillus niger. And in the back there, we have a very well-developed uh, mature mycelium, which is sort of the, the white sort of furry stuff that you see back there uh, upon which things are growing. But these tiny little filaments here, you can think of that as the sporing part of the fungus. So that's what we call the conidiophore. Um, some people call it the hyphae. And, and then on top you have the conidia, which is, which is the sporing head, if you will. So this patient presented with hearing loss, mild to moderate pain in the ear and, uh, and tinnitus as well. And you can see here this, this bed of mycelium. So the, this bed here is um, basically lots of hyphae, so very thin, fine filaments woven together to create the bed, the rooting bed of the fungus. And it is anchored not only to the ear canal, but it is also anchored onto the eardrum. Uh, so you can imagine that if left, this can cause some serious, serious damage. And what I'm doing at the moment is just trying to at least get some purchase on this mycelium, just to try and lift it. Now, the patient is tolerating this fairly well at the moment. And the aim here is to get rid of as much of this debris as possible to pave the way for antifungal medication. Now, you may be wondering, well, Aspergillus niger, how, you know, how has this happened? Is, is, you know, is this something I need to be worried about? And Aspergillus niger is very common in the environment. So hence why I said you may have touched it or breathed it in today. So it's in, you know, it's in the soil, it's in indoors, outdoors, on surfaces, it's in, you know, on dead leaves. You sometimes find it on spoilt food, like you'll get this kind of charcoaly dust on onions and things like that. So it is very, very common. And it's nothing to be worried about, even if you touch it or for the most part inhale it, it's, it's usually fine. Um, it can become a problem if you have a lung condition or if you have a compromised immune system, in which case, if you inhale it, you might um, develop aspergillosis, which is where the, the fungus proliferates inside the lungs. So you could call it pr uh, pulmonary aspergillosis, which is pulmonary referring to the lungs. But um, this fungus is opportunistic, and you can see just all this, you know, goo, this discharge now um, underneath the bed of the fungus underneath the mycelium. And the eardrum is back there and we will reveal at least half of it. But this mycelium is, is so tough, so difficult to remove. Um, so it's an opportunistic fungus and possibly what's happened here is that something at some point in this ear canal has disrupted the natural flora of bacteria. So in a normal ear canal, there's bacteria, there's bacteria all over you. And what sometimes happens is if patients, for example, take a lot of antibiotics, like they've used a lot of antibiotic eardrops, that may have killed some of the bacteria that was holding the fungus back. And this has given an opportunity for the Aspergillus niger to proliferate. And clearly, you know, it's proliferated quite a lot. Um, this patient doesn't have diabetes or anything particularly wrong with them, medically speaking. So it's, it's a mystery as to how this is formed. But... Um, what I'm trying to do here is remove as much of this debris as possible so that their general practitioner doctor can then prescribe antifungal medication. Uh, and it will at least have a good chance of working now that some of the debris is gone. Now what I'm doing here is I'm, I was hopeful that I could just kind of pull on this 
mycelium and it would all kind of come away in one beautiful layer. That's not happening. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to tear away as much as possible. And again, this patient isn't asleep. There's no anesthesia. They are just sitting in a chair and tolerating this as best they can. You can see just the amount of, you know, goo <laughs> underneath the mycelium. That's what I'm going to call it, goo. Um, so it's a, a, a lovely amount of discharge beneath that bed there. I've turned up the level of suction. And now I'm going to go back in and just tear away as much as I can at this point, because there's only so long the patient can, can tolerate this procedure. And now I'm just trying to tear away as much as I can and at least pave a way down to the eardrum. That's really what I, what I wanted to achieve. At least expose some of the eardrum so that the patient can have at least some hearing back in this ear. And again, we have to be very delicate because I am working millimeters from the eardrum. And the last thing we want to do is cause any damage there, laceration or perforation. We certainly don't want to cause a perforation of the eardrum because then the patient is in trouble. So now I've turned it up to about minus 550 millimeters of mercury. So this is as powerful as the machine can get. I'm just applying a little bit of pressure and just tearing away as much as I can. And there we have at least some progress there. So you can see how furry the mycelium is. And, uh, and you can see all of the sort of fibers, the hyphae that are making it up. So very, very interesting case, this one. And again, I'm not, I, I don't know too much about fungus or fungal ear infections, but um, I know just enough to, you know, um, impart some information on this case. So we're just going to drag this, out, this mycelium out. And then we're going to go back in and I'm going to try and at the very least expose some of the eardrum. Now, I only managed to expose half because the patient could not tolerate this procedure any further. So the, the eardrum is back there, but it's covered in this, in this discharge. So what I'm going to do is go in and I'm just going to see if I can suction away some of this discharge. So I'm going in here. Now, the patient did not like this. Um, so I had to end the procedure here. And to be fair, you know, rightly so. Um, you know, the last thing I want to do is to just persist and persist and persist and make the patient jump out of their chair if, if I apply too much pressure. And then that's really dangerous because then I've, I've got a suction probe right near the ear, uh, right near the eardrum. And if they suddenly make a, a sudden movement or jump, then again, we're in trouble. So I've managed to expose the left side of the eardrum and you may not be able to see it very clearly. So I'll mark it with an arrow in a moment. But this is a fairly good outcome. Um, after the procedure, the patient did feel like their hearing was significantly better. So there's the left-hand side of the eardrum. And again, the right-hand side is still covered in discharge. So uh, patient felt that their hearing was much, much better. They were more comfortable. Their ear felt way more comfortable. Uh, and now I've sent several images and a nice letter to their general practitioner doctor and the patient should be prescribed antifungal medication and they will probably come back in a couple of weeks so I can suction away the, the remaining debris and mess that will um, undoubtedly be left there. So there we go. That is Aspergillus niger, that is otomycosis. I hope you found this video interesting. If you have any questions, leave them down in the comments section below and I will try my very best to get back to you. And as always, I will see you on the next video.